What's going on, everybody, and welcome to the other side of the firewall podcast, where we talk about the latest and greatest in cybersecurity news, as well as we hide those movers and shakers and glass ceiling breakers, those people of color who made it to the other side of the proverbial firewall. My name is Ryan Williams, and as always, I'm joined by Shannon Tynes. What's up? What's up? What's going on? And Chris Abacon. What's going on, everybody? What is going on? So welcome to Monday's episode. So if you're not used to the show, if you're a new subscriber, so Monday, Tuesday are topics. Wednesday, we have a discussion. Thursdays is Ask a CISSP. Those are running about every other week now just because of scheduling. And then Friday's everything else. So movies, books, games, all that good stuff. So we had a very in-depth conversation about Deadpool and Wolverine without any spoilers, I might add. So check that one out from last week. But without further ado, I give it to Shannon. All right, everybody. So this article actually comes from usatoday.com, uh, written by Emily DeLetter. And the title of this one is 2.9 billion, with a B, records, including social security numbers stolen and data hack, what to know. All right. So this was one of those things where even even though we talk about this every week, right? Like this is something that when you hear 2.9 billion with a B, you're like, my gosh, you know, like that's a lot. That's a lot of sensitive information, right? Um, that many records. Not to say it's it's all in America, right? Because it was different countries that were affected by, by this as well, right? Like it was the UK was affected as well. It wasn't just here in America, but there was an enormous amount of uh, uh, what do you call that? Like sensitive information um, that was that was hacked in a data breach. So uh, it. it it may have already been released. Actually, they're confirming it's been released on an on an online marketplace, um, and it's one of those things where they, they tell you what's included in it. And this was 277 gigs of data, right? So that is a huge amount of information, right? So this is names, this is or excuse me, address histories, relatives, social security numbers, and it goes back at least three decades, right? So we're talking 30 years worth, right? And so when you look in this article, when you look at it. They actually have this spot you can go to to do like a social security number uh, like check to see if you were uh, if you were uh, actually hacked. And I was feeling good about myself, right? Because I worked my way back is what I did, right? So I started when, when you go to this database they have, you put in the state, you like you put in your information, the state, the year you were born. And I started working back from places I was signed. I was like, nope, nope, nope. But as I got to earlier in my career, oh, there I am. There's, there's my information, right? <laughs> there it is, right? Back to back to this state, back to this state. I ended up showing up. So, like, I was one of the ones that was hit. But for me, like, I have a um, a, a credit lock, you know what I mean, that I do through the through the different organizations, you know, Transperian, Ex Equifax, uh, or excuse me, TransUnion, Experian, Equifax. Um, so, like, I have a credit free. So nothing is going to happen anyway without them reaching out to me and saying hey is this pretty much verifying is this you you know what i mean if i want to uh do any any changes or anything like that i have to log in and take the freeze off for anything to be even ran against my social security number but like i said folks i was feeling myself there for a little while but eventually i was got to but like i mentioned 77 gigs of data 2.9 billion records. And like I said, it's not just us, right? Like it was the UK as well. Um, Canada was also um, in this. And the thing, here's here's what's kind of surprising about this, right? And I, I guess I shouldn't say surprising, but like for the amount of money we see when it's come to these ransomware attacks and things of that nature, and I'm not saying this is ransomware, but this was on sale on the dark web for $3.5 million. So I'm saying million with an M, not with a B, right? But that number, that figure just seemed low for the amount of information that they had, right? So, like, maybe I just don't know the going rate for criminals, but I thought it would be higher, right? It could be one of those things where, you know, they're, they're, people are coming after them now. They got the DOJ on their on their butts. The FBI is going after them and whatnot. So, they're like, I'm trying to get whatever I can and get up out of here, right? But, yeah, this was, this was a lot of information, folks. So, like, if you should happen, like I said, this article is usatoday.com. If you should happen to be interested to look up your information and see if they got you, go ahead and look it up and and again because i was military i knew there was a chance like they they probably got me right like i've had so many different breaches being in the military we had the was it OP, opm opm yeah, opm breach. Breach. opm yeah. breach yeah we're yeah. We're, we're, we're we're cooked guys yeah. we really got yeah. i, I kind of figured i was out there anyway but i was like i said i was feeling myself as i worked my way back through my different duty assignments and i was like ah they got me but yeah chris what's your thoughts on this man i mean my first thoughts reading through the article was really the scope of it they say and i quote it, this this data includes names, addresses, histories, relatives, and social security numbers dating back at least three decades. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. I'm assuming dead or alive, right? Yeah. So the the social security numbers that they can utilize and 
potentially exploit with this is it's just massive. I mean, yeah. really huge. So the first thing I honestly did after looking reading this article, I actually checked my freaking credit score, right? I went on whatever credit score reporting a mechanism you've got and see if anything's anything's fishy, right? But uh, first thing as well is when I checked my bank account, right? I made sure that my passwords are updated. They even say this in the article, make sure your antivirus and stuff and all that mm. stuff is good to go. Make sure your passwords are updated on your bank accounts. I, I've got a password manager through Apple, so I don't really know my passwords by heart anymore. I just have Apple randomly generate them for me, right? Because it's just easier. And <laughs> it's honestly gibberish, right? And that's hard to guess. I, I, I love that. It makes your multi-factor authentications enabled, right? Um, so that way they contact you to some degree if you're, um, if any account creation is being done on your behalf and it's not you know, authorized and really, and also they do mention being careful with email and social media accounts, right? So if uh, you're putting out a lot of information, you're posting every day, you, you can get a lot of uh, attackers or if you're not a, a private account, right? Or if, you know, ideally not no social media, but, you know, like Shannon here. But um, if you are, if you do have social media, just be careful what you're posting too much it posts after the fact, not when you, where you're at, right? Not don't post in real time, um, because the, a lot of information can be gathered. Like, if, what, what's what, what's a common uh, thing? Oh, your passwords, uh, name of mm -hmm. your dog, and your birthday, right? Mm -hmm. Usually, some of those right. numbers are included into your password, right? So, just be cognizant of that. Be cognizant of what you post. Update your bank accounts, and really take care of your own, right? Make sure that your friends and family notify them as well. Just hey. And if you've got, you know, people that are, you know, maybe older in your family that, you know, you work on, on behalf of them, right? Just make sure all that stuff's good to go. And that's kind of my first thoughts. No, absolutely. So, yeah, I'm not even, I'm not as brave as Shannon is. I'm not going to, I'm not going to check that part. Right now they got me. Yeah. But <laughs> before I go too far. <laughs> so we have our first ad. It's internal though. So don't, don't get too excited, but this could be you. So, uh, did you know? that the team here has nearly 70 years of combined IT and cybersecurity experience? That's right. You're getting insights and discussions from seasoned professionals who have been in the trenches and on the front lines of cybersecurity. Our podcast is growing fast with thousands of downloads, hundreds of unique listeners, and rapidly expanding YouTube audience. Every week, we reach a diverse group of listeners from career starters and journeymen and women to C-suite executives and senior leaders in the field. Whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro, our content is tailored to provide value across all experience levels. If you're a brand or marketer looking to connect with a highly engaged and niche audience in the cybersecurity and IT space, now's the perfect time to partner with us. Whether you're looking for a, a mid-row, pre-row, or end-row, social media shout-outs or newsletter placements, we've got you covered. The Other Side of the Firewall podcast is a proud product of RAM Cyber Solutions and Assessments, LLC. Interested in becoming a sponsor? Reach out to us via uh, the email address, the other side of the FW at gmail.com. There you go. See, yeah. it's just that simple. That could be you, but I would, I would be better at it because it's yours. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but so, yeah, I, I know I've, I've been compromised. I get text messages at least one or two a week that specifically have my name in it and my address saying, Hey, do you want solar? Do you want financing? Do you want what X, Y, and Z? They're, they're pretty well crafted. So I, I know I've been gotten, uh, it could be Mr. Cooper, it could be OPM, it could be anything in between uh, to include this. So what I do now is obviously I report phishing, I report spam, but when someone calls me and any type of marketer, salesman or whatever, I cut them off quick just because I already know it's probably something due to compromise or they're just trying to sell me something I don't want anyway. So the other day I tried to make a purchase, like I was trying to, I tried to use my a digital wallet at the uh, dealership because they, they did my my tires, my brakes, alignment, you know, et cetera. So it was a pretty, pretty decent sized purchase. It didn't go through the first time. So I was like, okay, my bank has my back. They'll probably send me a text and they didn't. So I was like, oh, that was weird. So maybe it was just an error with the reader. So I took out my card, stuck in the machine. It went through that time. I get home. I then get a call from my quote unquote bank saying that the fraud department, it actually was my bank, but because I'm so wired that it's automatically fraud. He was like, yes, yeah, so I just need your, either I need you to give me your card number because it, it looks like your card was used at the, uh, at the Wesley, uh, Wesley Chapel dealership, yada, 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 or give me your social. And I was like, is there a third option? Cause I'm not giving you either. 
Yeah. And he kind of was taken yeah. aback. He was kind of yeah. taken aback by it. Yeah. He was like, well, I'm going to send you a code. And if you could tell me what the code is. So he, he, you know, he messaged me, which if you, if you're, if you've gotten to that, if you're that good, then you probably get me. But like you had to have known where I was at, what I was doing, mm-hmm. and then gone through the rigmarole and sent me the SMS. You were you were an expert. <laughs> at, at, at that point, you deserve it, right? Like you've worked yeah. Yeah. enough. Yeah, like you've, you've earned this. <laughs> you've earned my money, so sir. Yeah. yeah. So that, that I gave him to it, uh, and yeah. then he, he was like, "Okay, cool. It's not it's not fraudulent. We'll we'll make sure that it goes through." I was like, well, "I'm already gone." So. I made a joke. I was like, I'm already gone, so you don't have to. And he laughed it off because I felt kind of bad because my, my wife was looking at me. She was like, why would you talk to him like that? I was like, well, I was trying to be a jerk. I just didn't know. <laughs> I was like, not not today. But yeah, so I just don't trust anything. I don't trust any links. I don't trust any emails. I don't trust anything. I go to the source. So I'm hyper hyper paranoid. And just like Chris said, because I have so many social media platforms, I'm just like, anytime somebody sends me a connection request, I scrutinize the mess out of it. Like, I'm just like, who is this person? How many friends do they have? How many connections do they have? How many mutuals do they have? What industry are they in? Mm-hmm. I just like do a thousand things before I click the, okay, let's connect button. Uh, and chances are they're trying to sell me something too, so yeah. which I don't want. Stop trying to sell me stuff. As I just tried to sell ad space on our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a hypocrite, but uh, I'm, I'm a very careful hypocrite. All right. So just be, just be cautious. Be hypervigilant at all the things and you'll be a lot safer. And, and then just like uh, Chris said, cut on your uh, two-factor multi or multi-factor mm-hmm. um, as a backup as well. But And that's becoming, uh, yeah. that's becoming way more prominent too. Like the, the multi-factor authentication, like you have a lot more places that are implementing that. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's becoming way, it's becoming much more the standard than what it used to be. No, yeah, it, especially with like uh, uh, Google and Microsoft authenticators. Mm-hmm. So now I yep. have- You've got like uh, pass keys now too. You can, you know, you can use yep, your biometrics, mm-hmm. which is awesome, yep. I think. Yeah. So I, I wind up in the morning, I get like three or four SMSs because I'm logging into email here, email there, mm-hmm. Slack and, you know, all the other stuff. So everybody's sending me uh, text messages. So it takes like a good five minutes to log in everything in the morning, which would have drove me crazy if I still worked for the Department of Defense. It's Let me go outside real easier. quick. Let me go yeah. outside real quick because uh, I'm just skiff. I'm going to check when my you, phone. When... <laughs> oh, I can write down my... Okay, great. And, 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 you, and you know what's crazy about it is that when, when that does happen, like those codes like they're usually no longer than 10 minutes too right so depending yeah. on how far you gotta walk like it's just like oh man so like it's to the point where i don't keep my phone in my car anymore like they have like storage places for them like it in the front of the building so like i'm, I'm like okay yeah. i gotta go to that that part right there and then come back and but you gotta you know badge in and do all this stuff to get right you know, yeah. deep into the belly you know what i mean but yeah it's it's, and, and it sucks it's for security sometimes- yeah, but you know it's funny. Like sometimes that building or wherever the the phone box is, where you know the the Faraday cages and everything, that that place usually has crappy reception too. So you got to walk yeah, like yeah. another you know fifteen yeah. feet just make sure you're outside. And you're like, <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is yeah. True. So so Ryan, I wanted to bring up something that you said too as well, right? So you were talking about like getting a different texts that have certain information in it so like there are sometimes we sign up for that too right like they're like if you want to sign up for something like if you're not paying attention you just leave the checkbox check that says you want to receive promotional information or whatever oh, right like you've already filled out all that information so it may not necessarily be that you're hacked i'm not saying that's not the case right because there are times that's definitely the case but it could right. be what you signed up for anyway right And you're just like ah, i left that box checked i don't care get me get me to whatever it is i'm trying to get into right now or sign up for right like or or I saw, I saw this car in the mall that I'm like, man, I, you know, I wouldn't mind driving a Maserati. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Let me go ahead and sign up for that. Like you can mm-hmm. really win it in the drawing, right? Nobody ever wins those drawings. Don't do that. Okay. Nobody wins the car. They're collecting Nobody's data. Good. They're collecting yeah, data. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, uh, I don't usually do that on, in the malls or whatever, but I have done that at AFI several times to win. Like, remember when it was hard to get an Xbox mm-hmm. or PS4? Oh, yep. man, I fell out so many of those raffles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got <Could> you. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they got yep. me. Yeah. So I just treat everything as though it's compromised. So yep. it takes you a little bit longer to get to where you want to get to. Um, but at the end of the day, you, you just have to do the best you can. Yeah. There it is. So definitely continue to tune in. Uh, we are over 500. So thank you very much. We're trying to hit a thousand and it's going, t- ticker's going up pretty fast. I think we're like 516, 517. So we've had a, a nice. more than a, a few more people sign up. Uh, of course, we have the newsletter. We're nearing 1500 uh, subscribers on that one. So thank you very much for that. Uh, and yeah, we're just, we're, we're doing really well this year. I think we're over, over the four or 6,500 downloads so far. So we'll probably be past where we're at, we're at last year because we we're just slightly over 10,000 last year. 
So yeah, I I'm greatly appreciate uh, everybody listening and sharing and all that good stuff. So keep doing that, please. Uh, and then uh, hopefully we'll throw some real ads up here <laughs> pretty soon. They, they're not just anything, right? I'm not trying to sell you vapes and boxers. I'm trying to make sure there's people who can provide you actual, you know, quality and value and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. So hit up all the websites that go by our name. Hit me up personally. I'm at Rye Rye Security Guy. That's R-Y-R-Y Security Guy. Uh, you can find me on all the social media platforms. And then uh, where can I find you, Chris? You can find me on LinkedIn under Chris Abacon, last name spelled A Bacon. There it is. Stay safe. Stay secure.